This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by unbeaten cruiserweight Chevron Clark. Chev, how you doing, mate? I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Um, big fight just a week away now with Tommy McCarthy. <laughs> Biggest fight of your career so far professionally, uh, certainly on paper. Um, you already won a final eliminator for the British title. This is being billed as a final eliminator for the British title. Can you just clear that one up for us? Are they making you do two? I don't know. They always seem to want to make me work harder for what everybody else gets easy. So I'm used to it. It is what it is. It's a big step up, isn't it? Former world title challenger, European champion, and coming off a European title fight in his last one as well. This is only going to be, what, your your ninth fight? Eighth fight? No, eighth fight. <laughs> I corrected myself. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, eighth fight, um, big step up. Yeah, I know. Um, that's what everybody keeps saying. So, you know, I just, um, you know, you guys call the shots and I hit them. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just another another opponent. Um, all of that don't mean nothing to me. Like, you come here to fight. Um, whatever you've done, it doesn't matter. Um, on the night is all that man. So, yeah. Is there like a, a measuring stick aspect to it? I think uh, Richard Rackpaw stopped McCarthy in his ninth fight. So if you were to stop him, you'd do it a fight earlier. Do you, does that come into your mind? I never knew that. It doesn't bother me. I'm Chevron Clark. And, um, you know, when I, when I fight, people enjoy it. So expect to enjoy this one as well. Good stuff. Did you Have you seen uh, McCarthy's last fight against Sislak? Um, yeah, I think I've, I've, I think I've seen it. Um, since like was moving like sweet pea, weren't he? <laughs> what, what do you make of McCarthy as a fighter generally, kind of strengths and weaknesses? How does he match up with what you bring? I don't know. I know what Chev brings. I don't know what he brings. Um, I've never fought him. We'll find out on fight night. And, um, all I know is what, what Chev brings. I worry about Chev. I don't worry about nobody else. So what are we going to see from you then, especially compared to your previous fights? What are the new wrinkles in your game? What have you been improving in the past few weeks and months? Do I need new wrinkles in my game? <laughs> I'm not suggesting you do, but I'm asking if you have. <laughs> well, if you've seen what I've brought before, expect some more of it. With a little bit more spite, a little bit more cantangerousness <laughs> and um, viciousness. Well, we always need a bit of cantankerousness. We always enjoy it watching that. You've been sparring, I've seen recently, in McGuigan's gym. I'm sure that's not the only place you've been, but just tell us a little bit about that, who you've been working with and, and what it's done for you. No, uh, Yeah, I've been, been over there. Um, Barry and Shane, um, they've hosted us and um, helped us in camp. Um, sparred with Craig, you know, he's recently moved there. Um, he's improving, I think. And um, yeah, I sparred with uh, ben, Benjamin Whitaker. Um, my former Team GB teammate, good friend, which was which was great. You know, it's good to have them old, old spars, man. Like enjoyable spars. Um, so yeah, shout out to Ben. A shout out to Craig and all the other guys that helped me in camp. But you know, listen, I ain't a talker, man. You'll see what I've been doing in the gym on fight night. You know. What does it do for you sparring some of the lighter guys? You mentioned Ben Whitaker and Craig there. Does it help with speed? Is that the main focus or is it more technical? Give, give us an idea. I can't tell you that. You know, I might as well go and tell my opponent what I'm, what I'm doing. Just know that I'm coming prepared and um, anything that he has or whatever, he, he, needs to, he needs to come and bring hell and level with it. Because it's not going to be a pretty place. You are, as I said earlier, mandatory for the British title, held currently by Isaac Chamberlain. You've been mandatory for a few months now. Has it been frustrating that you haven't managed to nail down the shot yet? A few months. You need to redo your math. It's, it's been eight months, I think, now. Or, sorry, sorry. It's been, yeah, eight months. So, you know, um... It, it, it's for the powers to be to make the fight happen. Eddie, to, to talk about it more, make it happen. Um, 
boxer to not box or Hennessy, whoever. Um, just make the fight happen, man. Like people wanna, people wanna see these fights. You got the guys that in Riyadh, I think Mr. Turkish making all the big fights happen. So, you know, follow suit. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, Isaac has been named as mandatory for the European title, held by Sislak, who we discussed earlier. Do you think there's a chance he might vacate and you'll fight for the vacant belt? I don't know. I don't care. I'm not fighting for the European. That has nothing to do with me. Isaac has the British. Chev is mandatory. The British board has called it. Let's make it happen. If someone does vacate rather than fight you, but they've got a bigger opportunity, do you still consider that a duck? I don't care. As long as somebody fights me and I fight for the British, that's all that matters. That's, the people want to see, listen, not, as long as I entertain the people that come out and pay their hard-earned money to, to see me fight, um, that's all that matters to me. Listen, I'll fight anybody. I've said that. I'm not going to say, oh, people are docking me and all of that. I don't know what's happening in their camp. I don't know what's happening in their mind. All I know is stuff is ready, prepared, and it's for Eddie Hearn, Matt Troom, and whoever else to make these fights happen. Is the British title something you thought about growing up in the sport and something you've always wanted to win, or, or were you more focused on the amateurs at the start? Uh, to be honest, I never had any thoughts of wanting to win or wanting to progress in boxing. I wanted to play football. Um, I've come into boxing and I've learned and I've achieved and just grew more hungry. And as I've executed over the years, it's like, okay, I've done that. Now I can do this. I can do that. Okay, that's available. Okay, I want that. That's going to be on the list. So, you know, it's all of this stuff is earned. It wasn't like a pipe dream. Oh, I want to do this because now it's like, oh, I'll come in this and I'm going along the way and I'm seeing what can be achieved. Um, and, I, and I'm going after it, obviously, um, to be hands, handsomely rewarded as well. And a lot of amateur or former amateur stars don't always translate that talent and accomplishment into the pro game. You've looked great so far. What has been the key to that transition? I don't want to be put into that category. Um, I've said this in previous interviews. Um, you have the likes of Mick Collinan, sorry if I've butchered his name, um, but he was great in the Olympics, amazing amateur. And people were like, oh, he's going to do great. And I'm sure there's plenty of us, but he's more prominent to me because it, it just stood out to me and it was the most recent one. And that like, whenever he's lost, people's always after. Soon after, people want to hang him. Oh, he was a great amateur. He was meant to do this. So, you know me, I'm a, I'm a seven fight novice. Let's, let's put it that way. As a professional, I'm a novice. So, I'm a novice. Let's treat me as a novice. What things did you put in place then when you turned over so that you wouldn't just be a replica of the amateur Chev Clark? I don't think I've changed anything. Look at me as an amateur and look at me now. Nothing's changed. Has I just know that hard work works. Kobe Bryant said it. Mike Tyson said it. All the successful people from the past have said it. Hard work works. And that's all I do is hard work. You know, I might not have the glitz and glamour and people might not be saying my name or people don't want to talk about me like how they talk about other people um, or push me like how they push other people. But, like, whenever shoves out there, like, you, you know what you're getting. And you might not know about me now, but you will know about me at some point. Well, I've known about you for a long time, since back in the GB days. And I'm surprised more people aren't talking about you if that is indeed the case. Let me give you your credit. From it was really real. Really a lot real. of men don't know about really it. Really real. Real. <laughs> I was going to leave that until the end, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it now. Um, it was announced yesterday that uh, Richard Reactport and Chris Billum Smith have come to a deal to fight for Chris's world title. Obviously, you're a little way away from world titles right now, but does it excite you how much of the cruiserweight division at the moment seems to be focused on Britain? Um. To be honest, I didn't. I, that's the first I'm hearing about their business. As I said, I focus on Chev. Um, but it's good to know that my division um, is attracting a lot of interest and there's a lot of eyes on it. Um, and hopefully, you know, well, no, hopefully, not too far, in the not too distant future, um, get me a little bit more experience 
um, doing these rounds. And um, I'll be in the mix. Um, and yeah, hand, be handsomely rewarded for it. And you talked about the hard work you're putting in. That's obviously with Sam Mullins at Churchill's. Just tell us a little bit about that relationship and why it works so well. Um, you know, it's just it's just a trust thing. Um, he's he's very, I'm very demanding. He's very demanding. We want to get it right. Um, and it, it's just that that's all that's all it is. It, it, it's people that want to be successful and are working together. Um, there ain't no yes men around me. Um, and it's just real hard work. How important was that to you when you turned pro? Because a lot of people get their heads turned by the the extra money, the glitz, the glamour, all of that. How important was it that you stayed true to yourself? I mean, that that's the only that's the only truth is self. You know, um, all these other people want to sell you a dream, um, and oh, we've done this and. We've done that, but a very wise coach, a very successful coach in boxing, said to me, he 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 said to me, listen, because your amateur coaches took you to the Olympics. How many professional coaches can say that? And how many of these professionals have gone to the Olympics? And I keep referring to that, but it's the truth. If you can take me to an Olympics, which arguably most Olympians are better than most pros, fact um why can't you make me a, a world champion as a professional and now Sam Wiley wasn't, wasn't my amateur coach but my amateur coaches were part of the, the process of deciding to work with Sam Wiley. and do you ever miss the amateurs at all like the camaraderie being part of a squad that kind of thing I miss the sport professional boxing isn't a sport in terms of what, it's a business. Yeah, it's a business and filled with snakes and rats. Has that been tough for you to adjust to then? Because as I say, you're a humble guy, very honest, and you've come from a background where you're kind of protected from that side of things in the amateurs. Yeah, in the amateurs, you have good people around you. Um, people that don't, well, on the GB setup, these people don't want nothing for you but to see you do good. Um as a professional, if you don't have the people around you, if you don't select the right people around you, it's just all, all snakes and rats, as I said, um, that are just there to make money out of you. And that's it. Once the money dries up, um, you're dried up. So are you glad in a way that you turned pro when you did and not, I don't know, five years earlier? Because you might have found that even tougher to, to manage. I don't know. I'm just on my own path. Um, it's working for me. And as long as I'm enjoying boxing, I'll do it. When I don't, um, I'll stop. Simple. I'm, I'm happy to go back and be a lorry driver. Uh, that wouldn't bother me. Like, if I get sick of boxing tomorrow, I'll do that. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, lorry driving. What did you enjoy Arguably about it? more than boxing. Um, it, again, it's truth. It's honest, hard living. I'm sorry. Honest, hard working, but at the end of the day, you know where you stand. Like in boxing, you don't know where you stand. But you do because of certain things. But it's just like, as you said, I've been mandatory for eight months. Eight months. Like, it's not that hard. Like, you two go and fight. That's all it, that's all it takes. But you have people's egos and all this other nonsense. So, like, really, that, yeah, that I'll leave it as that. Fair enough. Um, we've seen a lot of shows taking place in Saudi Arabia recently. That seems to be where all the money is. You've talked a few times in this interview about being uh, fairly rewarded for your efforts. Do you look at that and, and want to have a taste of it yourself? Would you like to fight out there? I mean, as one of the, if not the most exciting cruiserweight in Britain, I'd, yeah, I reckon I should, well, I should be in in on these shows um with all the quote unquote stars um being awarded for the work that I'm putting in. So yeah. All right, well yeah, I'd like to see that as well. Um just before I let you go, for people out there who are 
I don't know, on the fence about whether to watch the show next week or they don't know much about Chev Clark for whatever reason, what are they going to see from you next week, next Saturday night? You don't know about Chef Clark, Google and YouTube is your best friend. My name is C H E V C L A R K E C four C H E V. Go on YouTube, do your homework and tune in next week. The zone live. Great stuff. Chef, really appreciate it, mate. And um yeah, let's catch up again after the fight. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you too. And yeah, really real. Let's keep it really real.